Welcome to the Rock Off Rugby Podcast with me, Matt Moss. And me, Sam Leeming. This week we have Italian international uh, 25... Let's start that again. This, w- this week we have 25 cap international Seb Negri on the show. Another great conversation we've had on this podcast. Um, great insight into his journey to uh, playing for Italy in the Six Nations in the World Cup. Um, some great advice for uh, young players and regarding agents. Moving to pro rugby, step up with weight and the and mentality and the development of Italian rugby. If you've enjoyed listening to these podcasts uh, in recent weeks, please uh, don't forget to leave a like and uh, a comment if you want to see some more videos. It really helps us grow the channel, so we appreciate that. Like and uh, share and subscribe to receive weekly rugby podcasts. Uh, welcome to the Rock Off Rugby Podcast, Italian back row, Seb Negri. Seb, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Thanks thanks for having me. Good stuff. So just for the guys at home that don't know who you are, not not heard of you, give them a slight uh, synopsis of your career so far. Um, well, yeah, I was born, born in Zimbabwe um, and then uh, moved on to South Africa at the age of 10 and finished my sort of schooling there in South Africa and uh, joined Western Province. Uh, yeah, just after school uh, for a year or two, and then um, yeah, made my way to the UK to play uh, to play at Hartbury, where I played with uh, Mr. Leeming over there. Um, and then yeah, from Hartbury, sort of um, took off and uh, yeah, got my first sort of taste of international rugby while still studying. Um, and then after that, I made the move across here yeah, to Italy, where I am currently now, and uh, just about to start my. I think it's my fourth season now with uh, with Benetton Treviso. So, yeah, it's been a listen. It's been a very surreal sort of you know chapter and last couple of years for me. Um, you know, I'd, I'd never really thought that I would probably hit the heights that I have. And um, and yeah, listen, I, th- I think I just sort of taken it in my stride and and try to do the best with the opportunities that I've been, that I've that I've been given. And um, you know. Thank God to this day that it's uh, it's all worked out, um, and yeah, couldn't be happier. Very happy here in Italy, and uh, yeah, just super excited for for also what the future holds. Now, if we go back to the sort of um, early days um, and and where it started for you, Clifton and then Hilton, two pretty prestigious um, schools in SA. Um, fond memories of those schools. Um, have you have you been back recently? And, and tell us a bit about that and, and what a rugby you know they produce rugby players, kind of like a heartbreak, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, well, well, yeah, I was quite, I was quite lucky. You know, my family went through quite, quite a difficult time in, in Zimbabwe, losing, you know, our homes and our farms, um, and that was sort of a, a tough couple of years uh, making the move to South Africa. And you know, I wouldn't say that it was the easiest of transitions, but you know, as soon as I got into the in, into that sort of school of Clifton and you know playing sport and. You know, I was I was quite fortunate to go to such a great school like Clifton, um, and that you know that sort of grew my hunger really for rugby, and not only rugby. It, you know, I was a big big um, cricket player, and you know, all sports really. I didn't really just focus on rugby. Um, and then after that, yeah, I made the move. I was I was lucky enough to get a sports scholarship to to Hilton College, um, where I sort of kicked on. Um, yeah, I had a great five years there, and. You know they've they've produced some great sportsmen. You know just in rugby, you know the Gary Tashmans, the the Bob Skinstats. Um, you know also on the cricketing front, you know uh, numerous individuals. Um, so yeah, I was in a, a massive sporting environment, if you'd call it that, and um, you know had a fantastic five years there. And you know I was extremely lucky that you know my parents, you know, and my family sacrificed a lot, you know, for for me to attend those schools and. And I'm forever grateful for for that, and um, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I've got great memories there, and you know, like you touched on, I've been back. I haven't been back as much as I have would wanted to, but you know, I've sent a few jerseys back, and uh, you know, I think it was after my first year, sort of first taste of professional rugby at Western Province, I went back to hand out the the first team jerseys to to the players before they played their derby game, and that was you know special, but I. <laughs> You know, I wasn't quite the professional yet. You know, I was still sort of making my way in, into the professional game. So, you know, I'd love to love to go back and and see see the school that gave me a lot. Um, you know, from from Clifton and then on to Hilton. So, yeah, hopefully I can I can go back soon. 
um, and see some see some familiar faces. Yeah, it's obviously after after you tank Western Province, you headed over to England, played played the Hartbury. What made that choice for you to like pick up your bags and, and head to England? Uh, obviously, you, you and Sam both have come from academies, left those academies, then gone to a very successful rugby university. Uh, what made that decision for you? I think it was a, a mixture of both. Listen, I wasn't, um, you know, I love my time at Western Province and I was, you know, pushing hard to get an under 21 contract. Um, and was that, sorry, next, was, like that, were... was that post school, the Western Province? Was that, did you, yeah, did you yeah. go a year so, afterwards? So I was, yeah. So after, after school, I went straight to Western Province under 19. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I had a good, good year in the under 19 side, played Curry Cup under 19. And then, you know, province wanted me to sort of stay on in, a, in the under-21 fold. But, mm. you know, nothing was on the table in terms of the contract. So, you know, nothing was really coming of that. Um, and then j- during my time at province under-19, I, I, I was in the Italy sort of, I'd just been introduced into the sort of Italy set up. And, um, you know, just before the Junior World Cup, you know, we were, we were heading to New Zealand. And the week before, I got a, a just a, a knee injury and a... And that sort of made me realize that there is more to life than just throwing a rugby ball. And, you know, I was sort of, I sort of looked at life a little bit differently and thought, you know, let's try and get a degree behind me, you know, because sometimes rugby is not always going to work out, you know, one in a million get, get picked up and, you know, it sort of works out. So I think I just sat down with my, with my, with my brother, who's my agent and, and we looked at a few opportunities and, you know, Hartbury, um, seemed like the best option and they gave me a great deal to come over to the UK and you know that sort of made sense you know I'd, I think I'd I'd wanted to explore Europe um, and also I think you know moving to the UK was obviously closer to Italy um, so that would make that sort of you know that sort of I don't know, travel a lot easier if I was ever to get you know to that next stage of a, an Italy A call up and you know further on an international call up so yeah moving to Hartbury was was uh, you know if I look back on another the best decision I ever made and you know playing with yourself Sam and you know what it's like you know to play for for Hartbury it's a great stepping stone for anyone who really wants to further their career and you know I've got some special special memories and and made some special friends along the way for sure. Definitely a testament to to the establishment. We we spoke to a few lads on on the podcast, so we're trying to get away from Hartbury a little bit, but it's a testament to the to the setup there and and. Um, you know, it was an easy decision for me and like yourself, for someone like yourself to to um, come from, from SA and, and pick Hartbury and then uh, be, be catapulted out the other side. It's just a testament to the, to the unbelievable setup they have there, isn't it? Yeah, like, like you say, I mean, it's it's a special place. And I mean, just not like just talking about it and seeing a familiar face in yourself and, yeah. and looking back on the memories, you know, I still get, you know, goosebumps and, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to go back and visit more often. You know, I, I did at the, you know, at the beginning, but, you know, it's a great, great place. And, you know, from, from when I arrived to when I left, you know, I've got absolutely nothing but good things to say and got myself a good degree and, and made some incredible memories on the, on the field, you know, and to top it off by winning, winning the league, the Bucks Super Rugby League and, and then doing the, the double and, and winning the final at Twickenham was, uh, you know, was just the icing on the cake really. And, um, yeah, shit. It's probably probably one of the uh, the best, you know, up there with some of the best rugby memories I've had to date. And um, you know, if, if if I could go back and do it again, shit, I'd, I'd love to. But you know, it's great, great memories. And um, yeah, like you say, Sam, I, I, you know, it's a it's a great place to to play rugby, and uh, and you know, it sort of sets you up not only for rugby but for you know that that one day that might come and you pick up an knock or you know you suddenly told you you know rugby's at an end and you've got that degree behind you which is you know just as important yeah um like sam said we spoke to a few people from Hartbury, and uh but you're you're the first person that we really spoke to that's taken that next stage and really hit the top elite level of rugby how would you compare the environment at Hartbury to the fully full-time professional elite environment the occult Oculus- currently in how would you compare those two well i think i think hartbury is really professional um that's obviously that's there's more, I mean, yeah. yeah obviously there's more of a there's more like balance towards it though because you know you, you sort of got your lectures that you have to focus on too and and obviously your rugby on the side of that so 
you know, you have to look at it as quite a, you know, have it in like a balanced approach. Um, whereas when you're in a professional system, um, you know, it's all about rugby, you know, you, you live and breathe it. So, you know, I wouldn't say that there's too much of a, a big difference, but, you know, obviously your focus and attention is everything to do with, you know, trying to, trying to be the best and, and, you know, trying to put your, put your marker down quite early. Um, and I was quite lucky that I did that, you know, with Benetton, I think we had a, uh, a preseason game against Leicester Tigers, and that was my first. I think it was our first preseason game for Benetton, um, and I did I, I I did quite well, and you know fr from there that gave me a lot of confidence to be like, oh shit, you know maybe I can maybe I can actually play at this level. You know I've I know I've come from university where, you know it's not as professional, but um, you know I think that sort of gave me confidence to to push on. Um, but definitely, there's definitely similarities in the in the way things are done. You know, your analysis and and stuff's all done at Hartbury and the same here at, at Benetton. Um, but obviously, there's more than you know. There's that just that pure rugby focus where at Hartbury, you know, you've got your lectures to think about and uh, and certain things like that. Next, you um yeah, so under twenty stuff, you were still at, at Hartbury when you you um you played for them 2013, 2014. How was that transition again, going from um, the the book stuff and then going into to a new environment? Did you have any sort of piles in there already that you knew, or was it completely different? And yeah, okay. yeah, I did have some. I did have some close friends that I played twenties with, um, yeah. and then you know that sort of transition into the Italy emerging A side. Um, you know, I had a lot of familiar faces, so I was quite lucky, and and also the management was pretty pretty much the same. So that also stepped it up from 20s to and sort of taken a group forward to the next level um so that made it easier but you know what sam i didn't really think about it too much in terms of you know i just looked at it as a bonus you know that i've been you know called up to the italy a side or playing 20s i just looked at all of that as a bonus and just try to express myself and enjoy myself because even at that point i didn't think you know that i was ever going to you know make that elite step to play professionally or to make a living out of rugby i just sort of you know, I'm great. It's great that I'm at Hartbury and I'm I'm loving it. But you know, I just sort of took that positivity, um, and I guess that winning culture that you sort of experience at Hartbury, you, you don't lose too many games. So I try to take that into into the Italy setup, and you know, I, I'd like to think that I had you know a positive impact. Um, but yeah, I didn't think about it too much. I just sort of try to express myself and enjoy that and enjoy the enjoy the ride. Really, I didn't really think too much of it. Not not growing up in Italy, um, it's it's like like when did this become a reality that you wanted to play for Italy? I mean, you talked about moving to Hartbury to get closer to Italy. With that, what, what, at what age did you realise that yeah, Italy is probably the team where I want to be in? Yeah, I think it's uh, there's not an exact time, but I would say you know so, as soon as I got the sort of taste of under twenties, and then you know there was a little bit of noise about you know, maybe me progressing on, that's when I sort of thought, you know, right, I want to get my degree, but as soon as I get my degree, I really want to make a go of this. And, you know, having, I think having that degree in the back of my mind and knowing that I'd studied and that if I did pick up an injury or if it didn't quite work out that, you know, you know, it is what it is. I've got my degree now and I can focus on the next thing. And I think that gave me a lot of confidence. And I think if I give like, advice to any youngsters that are, you know, going through Hartbury or going through a Loughborough or, or a similar college or university, I would, I'll probably say the same thing is that that degree and that sort of backing that you get um, gives you confidence to make that next step. Um, knowing that you've, you know, you've done your, your, your studies and, you know, let's give rugby a crack. And if it works out, fantastic. And if it doesn't, you know, uh, you just, you focus your attention elsewhere, knowing that you've, you've done your, your studies and I think that gave me a, a real confidence booster and then you know as soon as I got that taste I thought you know right I, I maybe I'm good enough and I'll, I want to give this a full go. I suppose um, on, on this podcast now we sort of we obviously a lot a lot of the guests that I know and, and Mark knows you know Mark many from a coaching point of view but I suppose it's quite unique that the fact that we sort of get some real insight for people that don't necessarily get you know the top top you know um, exposure so someone like yourself and I, we interviewed Max the other week um, 
and it's really getting good in-depth you know, character of these players and these journeys that we've gone through, especially university. You know, we're a little bit biased, but I suppose another a key topic for like younger players and players coming through is is agents. And I know you you were a bit biased because you got your brother, you know, in the main frame of that. But how impactful has he been in in your career? And um, what would you say? You know, um, you've been through it and, and done done some deals and and, and high profile um situations how would you say you know for, for younger players you know how would they maybe steer that sort of area of um because everyone, everyone looks towards it don't they yeah i, I think you 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 yeah you, you're right and it's an area you have to be very careful on mm. um and i'm very lucky that i've got my brother who sort of looks after me and has got my best interests at heart and mm. and it comes down to trust they eh, sound like uh, yeah, definitely i fully trust my brother and you know we're a team at the end of the day, like, like we've said many a times to each other, when we're having a beer at Christmas or, you know, on holiday together, you know, we're a team and I, I want to try and help him and he wants to help me and get the best for me. What I would say is that you've got to be very, very careful about agents in terms of, you know, they, they promise you a lot. And I've experienced it. So I experienced it, you know, a few times, you know, the odd agent slipping into your DMs or, you know, sending you a message or an email and you, you're not quite sure, like, what's going on, promising you the world. Um, you've got to be very, very careful and, and trust the, the people close, close to you and around you and, and get advice, you know, get advice from people that are, like you say, been there and done it. And, um, you know, you can't, you can't let an agent dictate. You, you got to, you got to do it yourself. Um, and also on top of that, like an agent can do so much, but you got to perform on the field and your performances on the field will get you the contract, not the agent. Um, so you know, a lot of, a lot of youngsters are saying like, Oh, what agent should I go with? You know, focus on what you can control and what you can do first. And then, you know, I think that sort of stuff behind you will take care of itself. Um, you know, I'm very lucky that I have my brother and, you know, some good representation in, in France and, 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 um, in the UK too, with Billy Clark, etc. You know that they're, they're good people, and and I do trust them. Um, but yeah, you got you got to be caref careful about who you who you go with. And you know, if I could if I could give any advice, it'd just be you know do your talking and stuff on the field, and then that sort of background noise will take care of itself, and you'll get your you know your dream move or or that contract that you sort of chasing. Um, but yeah, you've got to be careful because some people will promise you the world and you know, it doesn't quite materialize. Um, and you sort of sat there yeah, or thinking about like where, where it went wrong. Um, but yeah, just, just focus on what you can do and, and the people close to you. And also, you know, I'm a big family person, you know, me, Sam, you know, very close with friends, very close with family. And, you know, I'm very lucky that I've got their support too. And that's, that's the most important thing for me. I was at a um, Rugby Players Association meeting with an academy and they were discussing agents and they were just like, yeah, there's some very, very good agents about it, but at the same time, there's some agents that just aren't going to care about you and yeah. are not going to have your, be your best interests at heart. And it's very easy as an 18-year-old that you're going to be coming out of an academy and, a, and an agent can say, right, well, here's, here's a free pair of boots, here's, here's some other free stash, uh, come with me, and that's it. And suddenly you signed on for two years with an agent that has only given you, um, the dog just decided to come in, brilliant. Um, that's, ju that's just decided to give you a free pair of boots, but then you don't really get too much out of it. So it's what, what they were saying is do your research, talk to, uh, talk to people they represent as well and yeah. see how they are because through, through talking to these players that they represent, they're going to, they're going to tell you the truth about them. They go, well, yeah, I'm going to sign on for him again, or that's it. I'm I'm done with them after, after yeah. this contract. It's, 100%. it's a strange world no, you, of agents, but yeah, no, you've you've absolutely right in terms of you got you got to do your research. You have got to speak to people. You have got to speak to the clients. You know, sort of on the on on their books and um, and yeah, sort of get an insight to what they're about, and then go from there. Um, but yeah, like, like I would like I said, you know, you just focus on what you can do and and. You know, if you're performing well on the field, the the free boots and things that they'll all come. Um, yeah. So, j just to go from like you move to Benetton, then really, um, obviously, your brother will have a big hand in that, uh, negotiate your contract and all that. But 
why why Benetton for you? Um, obviously, a very talented player. You had a crack in first Six Nations when you came through there. You got a lot of public praise from pundits. Um, I'd be shocked if there wasn't any other offers on the table for you um, from different clubs. So why why Benetton as an Italian club? Was that to try and progress the rugby in Italy? Yeah, well, it was sort of, you know, it was a deal that was done quite early, if I'm being honest. It was sort of done because I think it was in my my last year, at Hot, just before my last year at Hotbury, I got my first two caps for Italy. Um, you know, I was with the Italy A side and then went across to... Um, to uh, yeah, I got called up to the to the States, played the States in Canada. And then after that, um, Benetton came knocking on the door and wanted to get me quite early and wanted a deal to be done. Um, and that's when the sort of negotiation and negotiations came up, came about. Um, and yes, there were one or two clubs and academies that were that were sniffing about, but nothing really materialized. Um, so yeah, the Benetton op- option was by far the best. And you know, getting advice from people like Conor Roche and, and people close to the sort of Italian system, it was probably the best option for me. And I've never looked back, really. I didn't, you know, I, th- I think it was a great decision. And, you know, I sort of, I was lucky that in my first year, things worked out really well. And then I signed on with a, with a new brand new deal that my brother did. And, you know, I, saw, I sort of haven't really looked back. Um, and then you know, after the first Six Nations and, you know, sort of my second season too, where I, I sort of, you know, after your first season, you've got to show that consistency in the second where sometimes, you know, it's quite tough. You know, you know the opposition suddenly know who you are and, and have your number. Um, and I knew that the second year and the third year would, would, be, would be tough too, but just because, you know, there's that expectation. Um, but you've got to show that consistency and that same sort of drive and determination, which, you know, I was quite lucky that I had great support systems around me and... I kept my feet on the ground and it was all just very surreal. You know, suddenly you're at uni and then suddenly you're in a professional system and playing for Italy and playing against guys that you look up to and, you know, watched on telly when you were, when you were young. So I, I still, even to this day, I'm not, no, no joking. Like I still pinch myself sometimes when you come, when you like being at the world cup and things like that, you know, these are things that you dream about. So they're a massive bonus for me and I'm still fully determined to, to get better and, you know, I, I, you know, I do, I do want to keep developing, keep getting better, because I think there is still more to come. Um, but it's also about showing that consistency week in, week out. And um, you know, I think if you're doing, if you're doing that at this level cons- consistently, uh, you're in a good, you're in a good place. So yeah, just, I just guess, just keeping consistent. But yeah, for sure. I mean, l- listen, from from when my first sort of career kicked off with Benetton in my first year to now. You know, I'd be lying. There, there has been interest and things like that, but like I said, you just got to do your, your talking on the field, and you know, you'll get your your rewards that you deserve. You know, yeah, it's a very fond memory of uh, coming to watch you versus Bath. I think it, yeah, your first season. So was that that twenty seventeen? That that game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was the first time me and a few boys came down from Hartbury and, and saw you play. Um, remember seeing put on a few put on a bit of weight and was still pretty mobile on the field. It was, it was really cool to have him play, play with you and then watching you play, you know, uh, and progressing on. How have the demands changed, uh, particularly on your body, I suppose, and, and, and the schedule and things we alluded to, how professional Harbury is, but how has that sort of changed your body and potentially your mindset as well? Yeah, listen, I think, like, like you said, I sort of think that, that physicality and things – you know, you sort of, you know, you're not expected to hit massive targets and things. Like when I arrived, yes, they were like, well, you need to get into better nick. But <laughs> they weren't like, right, you have to go into the marshmallow group or, you know, anything like that. It was sort of just take it in your stride. You'll make improvements if you just stick to what we tell you. Um, you know, you're not killing yourself. Um, but I think like you touched on, it's the mental side that's probably the most important. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, like I, I did make physical gains for sure, and hundred percent. And I had to focus more on that. You know, you weren't playing on a Wednesday and then, you know, going on a night out with all the boys after a game, and then at three o'clock in the morning having a chicken burger or whatever it is. <laughs> you know, it was. You know, you had to be more professional in that sort of that aspect. So yeah, that that all came naturally. And and like you said, that you know, I had I had to 
put on a bit of timber, but I also the most important thing is that I have to stay mobile and, and fit and strong and touch wood. You know, to this day, I haven't picked up as you know a lot of injuries. I've had one or two niggles, but no serious injuries. Touch wood. Um, and then just the mental side, you know, surrounding yourself with with good people, with um, people that keep you level-headed, a good family, and you know that's definitely helped me, you know, in my journey so far. I've got great friends, great family, and you know I, I couldn't really ask for more. Um, so yeah, and, and like that that day you touched on against Bath, like that that to this day is still one of my best memories. I think it was a Champions Cup game against yeah, Champions Cup, the yeah, and it was unreal yeah. evening, wasn't it? Yeah. At the wreck, like that was, that was special, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and that was special, and also to to see some of my ex teammates like you and yeah, that's cool. You know, a couple of other boys um, watching me. You know, that was also like a surreal sort of moment for me, and I and that definitely gave me more motivation. You know, I was keen to get stuck in, um, and you know, that was just the beginning. But I really wanted to just kick on from there. Definitely, and I suppose going into changing teams in in pro rugby and stuff, you, you've always got people who are older and more experienced at Treviso, but also Italy. Obviously, there's Parise at Italy. Who's been sort of the most influential in some of the lessons you've learned? I suppose there's some quite quite big things you, you've learned from other players like that. Oh, ma- massively, and, and not just your own teammates. You know, you learn you learn a lot from people you play against. Um, yeah, 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 and. Well, like you touched on Sergio, I mean, he's, uh, we watch him, I've been watching him since when, when I was in, still in nappies, basically. Um, <laughs> and then suddenly I'm thrown in, I'm playing with him and like in training and I'm like, <laughs> you know, on the other side of the scrum, it's very surreal. Um, but, you know, he's, he's been, he obviously, you know, his record and sort of the person he is and the stature is, he speaks for himself. But, you know, a lot, a lot of other guys through the club and, people that I've played against have really helped me in my, in my sort of journey. Um, you know, and yeah, there's, there's countless names that would, that spring to mind. Um, but yeah, for sure. It's been, like I said, it's been surreal. And, you know, like, like, like I said, from, from the beginning, you, you're watching all these people on TV and going through university and watching them and looking up to them and then suddenly you're playing against them and playing with them. Um, yeah, it's a lot of pinch yourself moments. Um, and also like being at the World Cup playing against the Springboks, you know, guys that, you know, I supported, like I was a big Springbok fan and big Italy fan. And then so yeah, suddenly you're playing against them and with them and then, you know, in the in the changing room after a game and sharing a beer and you know, you're like a nervous little schoolboy. Yeah. I suppose like, going back to pre say like when you're in camp and stuff and around that environment, do you, you sort of have to oh, check yeah. yourself and you're like, do you have you have to oh, be like A one? Yeah. Like I can imagine yeah. you're like like I remember when I first came in, like having dinner, I was just like hoping, like, like oh, no, if we become, if we come sit me for dinner, and like my Italian's not great or whatever, and like he's like a big dog, I'm just yeah. gonna be like, what do what I say to him? Like, I'm a massive, I'm a massive fan. You mind come? Yeah. Uh, Autograph, please. Then, it's like, a, like. Also, like another pinch yourself moment, like that's at the beginning. Like you're like a little schoolboy, you know, in, in the in the in the team hotel having your meal, and like there's like me and Jake and whoever else, and we're having our meal, and then you see like someone like Sergio coming, and you're like, Oof. you know, that there's that intimidation fact, you know, you get intimidated, mm. but then like cut three years later, you're in a hotel room in Japan at a World Cup, and there you are playing FIFA in the same room. So it's, mm. you know, it's like like you know you, you, it's sort of surreal i guess like i said it's you know you know you take those little steps and then suddenly you know you, he's your teammate and your friends and you've got that respect you know that comes through training and comes through playing for each other and it's not just Sergio. you know there's every player in the team is that and you know teammates at benetton guys that i look up to now and always will you know i've learned i've learned a hell of a lot you just mentioned the world the world cup there um your first taste of a World Cup. How was it for you? How big of a learning curve was it? What was the biggest uh, lessons you learned from that? Yeah, like pinch yourself moment. As a kid growing up, you're watching World Cups all the time, and um, yeah, to go to Japan and experience a World Cup in that Japanese way was was incredible. I experienced what Japan was like two years before that when we t- when we toured Japan, but. 
to go there for a World Cup and you got the ceremonies and getting your medal and you know that was all just ma- massively massively proud um, you know a proud day for me and my family and you know to be a part of you know something like that is uh, extremely extremely special um, and yeah some great experiences some you know I think one of our complete performances in Canada when we when we put Canada away and you know it was great to get a win and be a part of that and to to score in a World Cup for me was probably one of the, the highlights so far of of my career um, so yeah and, and to have my dad there who'd come from Zimbabwe and you know for 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 to, for him to fly out and to have, there was a moment after the game where you know I think we just both you know went into floods of tears because, you know, we're, I was at a World Cup stage. My dad was there supporting. Um, there's actually a photo of my dad just crying and, and me giving him a hug. Uh, um, yeah, I think, I think it was just the nerves and excitement com- combined. But, um, no, special, special experience and, um, you know, something to tell the kids, you know, one day for sure. Sweet. Yeah, um, you know, definitely. I think that's a special moment that, as, as well that your dad being able to experience that. Um, I mean, I mean, look, there's going to be a few different mindsets there from him as well, especially with yourself that could that you could have picked three different countries to play to play for if you had the opportunity. Obviously, it would have been Zimbabwe, uh, South Africa, and Italy. Uh, how how's that been in Italy? How how accepted did you feel straight away when you moved in? Did it help with uh, with being in the under twenties setup? Um, and obviously, speaking with uh, with a Zimbabwean South African accent, it doesn't necessarily come up, come across as Italian. But you do a lot for Italian rugby. So how, how was that transition into there? There wasn't, there, you know, there wasn't really real doubt in my mind that you know mm-hmm. that I wanted to play for Italy. I didn't really think of Zimbabwe or or South Africa or you know, you know, with all due respect, like I just, you know, I just sort of thought that you know, Italy was a massive part of my life. Um, you know, a lot of my family were from from Italy, so you know, as soon as I, you know, made my debut for the for the country and wore the jersey for the first time, whether it was under twenties or with the first team, you know, it was a really proud moment for myself and for my family. And I, you know, I, I, every day is is a privilege to to represent something you know bigger than yourself and represent a whole nation. So, um, yeah, there was never any doubt in my mind, and from day one, I felt very accepted. Um, you know, there's great people here and, you know, whether it be in the Italy system or, or, or at the system in Benetton, you know, there's, you know, I've, I've been welcomed with open arms and like I said, made, made some great, great friends and, and teammates and learned a lot. And, you know, I think, I think it shows that I've just extended my contract now with the club, you know, for another two, two, possibly three years. And I think that that shows, you know, that, the sort of project and the sort of, um, you know, the pathway that Italian rugby is on at the moment and uh, the journey that, you know, that, that I'm on and also, you know, that the club's on too. So, you know, I, I, I didn't really hesitate and I'm, I'm very happy here. And, you know, like I said, from day one, I felt felt like it was home in a way. You don't, don't get me wrong. I love going back home. I love seeing the family. I love going over to the UK. You know, I love the UK, you know, the place that gave me a lot, you know, Hartbury and, you know, great friends there that I made. So I love going back to visit. Um, but, you know, Italy's home and I, and I feel very happy here and, and also lucky, you know, um, especially with, you know, what's going on with this whole coronavirus and everything. It sort of puts things in perspective and, um, you know, extremely grateful and lucky to to be where I'm at. Pre, pre-World Cup. Mass- oh, go on, Mark. Do you want, do you want to go? No, say it's a massive, exciting project, Italy, at the minute. Um, a really young team, particularly in the back row. That back row is really coming through um, with you, Jake, really head, heading that. And it's a massively exciting project for Italy. And for me, look, I, I don't, I don't blame you for wanting to be part of that. I think that's, I think it's going to be really interesting to see where Italy can go. Uh, the club in Benetton, obviously, is growing, it's developing, and I think for a, a young man still at 25 to be able to commit commit yourself for another two three years and keep seeing that project through it must be so exciting for you yeah for sure and like i said like italy aside just at benetton like um you know last year making the quarterfinals and playing against munster and losing by one point like 
in 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 Ireland going going there, all the odds against us, and we take them right down the wire. We missed a drop goal to win the game, and like I think that just shows the sort of the path that we're on, and we've got that belief. You know, I think always in the past, you know, Italian Ital- Italian mentality wasn't quite there, and I think that's something that's improving a lot. Um, and you know, I, I definitely think we're in the right way. And also with Franco Smith, you know, coming on now as new head coach of Italy, you know, he'll bring his own ideas and. And that sort of mindset and winning culture and things that he's, you know, instilling. Um, and like you say, a lot of youngsters coming through. Um, I don't think I'm classed as young anymore. I'm, well, I'm turning 26 now. I don't know if that's still young. <laughs> Sam is still young. <laughs> so, um, not, yeah. Not all, is it? It's not all. It's not you, all. You're not, you're not hitting your end of your career. So, yeah. No. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot, 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 lot of a lot of excitement, and like I said, you know, when I when I signed here, you know, I didn't I didn't really, I, I, it would feel wrong if I left or anything, just because I I feel like there's a, a great project here and and something that I really want to see through, um, and try and be a part of something special for sure. Definitely. How, so you've been involved in the national setup now for four years, yeah. and the national teams progressing, your club teams progressing. How's rugby in Italy itself progressing. How have you seen that? Like at a grassroots level, at a fans level? Ma- What's massive, happening with that? Yeah, ma- massive, massive amounts. And, and, and I think that'll only, that, you know, that'll improve when the team starts getting results. Like, obviously with Italy, it's, it's always difficult. You know, you're playing in the Six Nations with some of the best teams in the world. It's always going to be tough. But, you know, once we get a few of those results and the bounce of the ball starts coming our way, We'll see, you know, grassroots levels and things start improving. You know, they're improving a lot now, but they would, you know, that would be taken to a whole other level. And I know Justin Treviso, you know, after the success every year that we're starting to have and we're building on something great here, um, you know, you, you do recognize that, you know, you go into the center for a coffee and, you know, they, there's fans and there's people that are really happy to see you and you go to the supermarkets and, the guys, you know, chuffed, chuffed to bits to, you know, to help you out and to, you know, chat rugby. And, you know, I think, I think that's, that's really important. And I think that's getting better every year, you know, as I've sort of on year on year, you know, you can see that sort of that getting, that getting better and that improving. And like, when you go back, when you go to the training ground, now oh, there's a lot more kids, you know, joining the Benetton academies and from the under nines and the under eights. And you can just see, you know, there's, things are moving in the right direction and I'm not saying it's going to take you know it's going to be overnight um you know there's still a lot of work to be done but I definitely think um it's moving in the right way and, and if the two franchise clubs you know Benetton and, and Zebra can get good results and keep moving in, in the right direction that'll only have a knock-on and a domino effect on on the rest of the country and you know rugby on the whole. Connor obviously was a, was a big part of Italian rugby for the past four or five years however long he was there um Franco coming in, uh, obviously a fellow South African, um, has kind of left a bit of a legacy there. I, I imagine, you know, a fresh, fresh voice, fresh, fresh mouth is always good, you know, in, in any any establishment after a certain period of time. How did you enjoy playing under Connor uh, Negs, and, and you know, how are you looking forward? Did you know Franco before he came in? No, I, d- I, d- I didn't know. I didn't know Franco Smith before, and he obviously been at Benetton. Mm. Uh, for many years and very successful here um, but yeah quickly first to touch on Connor I mean mm. what a great what a great person and what a great um, coach you know I'll forever be thankful for what he did for me and you know the relationship that I had with him you know him giving me my first taste of international rugby and you know really believing in me and not rushing me and throwing me in the deep end I remember the conversation that we had before England um, it was my first Six Nations game. I remember him just taking me aside and just being like, just enjoy yourself, you know, just, you know, take it all in, enjoy the moments. And, um, you know, that sort of backing and him coming over and giving me a hug and saying everything will be 100, you know, everything will be fine. Just express yourself and, you know, we, everyone believes in you. Um, you know, I think you know, that was really good of him. And, and he didn't, like I said, he didn't chuck me in the deep end. You know, I had to... That first, I think that first time I got called up, it was the, during the November tests. And um, it was before that Six Nations. And we had test matches against Fiji, uh, Argentina, and South Africa. And I didn't, I didn't play any games. Um, 
but I was I was involved in the group. And Connor just said, kept saying, you know, he just said, be patient. Your time will come. There'll be an injury. There'll be an opportunity. And you know, he was right. And you know, you know, I think he integrated me really well into the group. Um, and what a great guy off the off the off the field too. And his whole coaching setup with you know Marius Goosen being the defense coach and Mike Cat being a attack coach. You know, it was it was really really a good a good um, coaching setup and you know for, forever thankful for what he did for me and then Franco coming in completely you know different different guy different sort of mentality and different um, tactical approach um, but what I can say is that we work really hard under him um, you know he's really stepped things up and I think you know it's, it's you know it's, it's, a, it's a very exciting time for for Italy because he, he's so driven and and motivated to, you know, take us to new heights, you know, and build on what Connor's, Connor's done. Um, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully he, he looks at me and, and, and likes what he sees. But, you know, my focus at the moment is just on Benetton and, and trying to perform well for them. And, and hopefully um, Franco likes what he sees and, and um, you know, I get a couple more opportunities under him. Um, but yeah, for sure, a very exciting time. And, and a guy that's very driven and uh, and motivated to do well. So, yeah, looking forward looking forward to it. And just um, jumping back to World Cup stuff, Negs. Um, understandably, you know, any pre World Cup camp is is pretty brutal. Um, was that the toughest sort of period of time you've gone through? Were you in the best shape? Because obviously you hear players being yeah. tough and things like that. Yeah, there were there were one or two days. I mean, you get through it because you know you know what's waiting for you on the other side. And and when you get through the camp, listen, you're on a plane to Japan, and when that moment hits, and you know you're waiting for that phone call from Connor, and and he's like, listen, you're on you're on the plane. Um, you know, if you have that in the back of your mind, you know you you can't really complain too much. Um, so yeah, there were one or two sessions. I remember, like, I think it was. We we're up in the mountains. It was like 34, 35 degrees, like boiling hot. Um, and we we're doing like ridiculous watt bike sessions, getting off the watt bikes, doing bear crawls. And you know what it's like for like tall guys, bear crawls are just horrible. Like, and then you had to like carry your partner, you had to carry your partner like 20 meters, then do a bear crawl and then get back on the watt bike. And man, you know me, my legs are, are massive. So I, was, I was struggling. I was struggling and I, was just, I just kept, I just kept thinking, I was like, you know, you have, you go, sometimes you have to go into those dark places where you just consider like, why did I do, why did I choose rugby? Why couldn't I just finish my degree, go and work in an office, um, you know, have your morning coffee, go out for a nice lunch, have a Costa's or a Starbucks or whatever. Um, but no, yeah, there was some tough, there was some tough sessions and they're like, like they always is, whether it's with Italy or with the club, but you got, you got to, you got to just dig deep, and you know, at the end of the day, it's just money. And the like, some of the, like the other day, we did a ridiculous session, and it was like up downs, tackle bags, getting up, like work for three minutes without stopping, and it was, it was horrific. And then, like my coach just comes to me afterwards, and it was just like, don't worry, Seb, it's money in the bank, it's money <laughs> yeah. in the bank, just tick the box, just tick the box, and like that. Obviously, once you've done all the work, you know that just gets easier. And, and I remember doing that drill. We did the drill a week later and because I'd already done it and like my mentality was already completely different and like mm -hmm. I just went into it and I wasn't even you know not nowhere near as blowing as I was the week before um so yeah those those sessions do come around and they're not nice but you just get through them and yeah like I said you just tick the box and move on and then uh, obviously soaking up the Japanese culture and, and um for the period of time you were there We've um, again we've spoken to Tom Savage, who's playing in Japan at, at the moment and for next season. Mate, how was the vibe? And I know it was a World Cup, so pretty different. But the club scene is obviously hugely growing there. How was soaking up the, the vibes there? For those who don't know, you, you, you're a huge uh, sushi fan. How, how was the, the food, for, especially? <laughs> that sushi. That sushi is dangerous. <laughs> uh, but yeah, listen, in, in the environment that we were, it was very very professional in terms of you know, from one hotel to the next and, you know, but what I would say is the Japanese people and the, and the hospitality was literally nothing like I'd, like I'd never seen before. Um, incredible people, friendly, always like, 
yeah, you know, just bend their backs for you, like whatever you wanted, whatever you needed. Um, you're literally like our, our liaison officers, the Japanese guys were just incredible. Like I remember on days off, like if you needed anything, if you needed a cab, if you needed, you know, restaurants or this, they would just do everything. So uh, it was incredible. And, and the, the fans, I mean, you, you, you must have tackled their cheer. And if you make a tackle their cheer, like they were just, <laughs> they were just mad. like it was just like playing, playing at home, like playing. Yeah. It was just playing in front of fans that just loved, rugby they didn't really care who won it was just you know it was completely different and to be involved in something like that uh, you know I think it was the first first Asian World Cup am I right um yeah I think so, so yeah. yeah to be involved, yeah to be involved in something like that was was so special and 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 like I said the people the culture completely different um and like a little bit bizarre like I'm not gonna lie like the, some some of the things um are just a bit a bit weird, but uh, you just gotta you just gotta take it all in, and it was it was an incredible experience. Awesome. Yeah, that, that's a pretty uh, pretty great end to to what, what we want to chat about there. Um, for me personally, I've I've been watching Sam and yourself growing up through Harbour, and it's great to see these players such as yourself, such such as Sam, progressing in the rugby. And I love watching you guys play. So that has been an absolute privilege for those few years I got to do that. Um, but at the end of all these, we ask three questions to each of our guests. Uh, Sam, go on, you can, do it for the, you can do it for the first time. Ask the three questions, mate. Uh, so first, deep in, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, yeah, first one, next, put you on the spot. Um, what is the best piece of advice you've been given uh, professionally or off the field? Um, best piece of advice was live life to the fullest and just just take every opportunity with both hands and just enjoy it. You know, you're going to learn something from, from when you, when you fall down and when you, when you struggle or you miss a tackle or you make a mistake, you're going to learn from it. And when you do something well, you know, you just got to take it in and enjoy it because there's good times and bad times. So just, you know, make the most of both and, and try and learn, learn from other people. Very good. Uh, next one is, um, I'll go, Mark. Um, yeah, book go or on. film, book or film recommendation next. Any any good series you've been watching, film or a book that you're reading for, for the for the listeners. I'm actually I'm actually just I'm just about to start Eddie Jones's autobiography. Oh, okay, um, yeah. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what he said. But I'm a massive Liverpool fan, so I really enjoyed Steven Gerrard's autobiography. Um, you know, and I and I like also a massive cricket fan, so I enjoy autobiographies. KP's was another one that I enjoyed um, getting a little insight to sort of, you know, the, the shenanigans that went on behind the scenes with him. Um, and then when it comes to movies, I'm a massive, massive fan of a good chick flick. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> there's, count, there's countless, countless ones, but um, mate, I'll, I'll probably say Notting Hills up there with one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, very good. Six <laughs> foot four. You got it. You got Italian international. Macro. You got. You got to love films of chick flicks. Brilliant. You got to love Hugh Grant and his dance moves. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm the I, I'm the same. I love them, but uh, I, I'm five foot four, <laughs> and it has slightly a different appeal. But yeah. <laughs> It's uh, yeah, brilliant. Uh, that's the best answer I've ever think. <laughs> Got some final question, mate. And then next, what's what's next for you, mate? What's um, what are you going to focus on the next six, twelve, two years? What's what's next for Seven Agri? Um, you know, I've been, I have thought of you. Know, I had a lot of time to think about this over you know the last couple of months, just because you know being at home. But I, I think just trying to enjoy every opportunity that I've been given um, and try and make the most of, you know, of, of this sort of journey that I'm on. It's not going to last forever. So take it all in. Um, and then, you know, if I'm being more sort of rugby focused would be just be as consistent as I can um, learn, work on, you know, the, the positives and negatives of my game. Um, you know, I've still got a lot to, lot to work on and a lot to, to get better at. Um, so yeah, it's just about working hard, being consistent, 
and 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 sort of just enjoying this this journey and this and this and this sort of road that I'm on because it's not going to last forever. So yeah, I just got to smile, get on with it, and 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 just make some, make some memories. Awesome, make your memories. Hashtag. <laughs> so yeah, um, Seb, if uh, the guys want to follow at home, want to follow your journey, uh, where can they find you on on all the socials? Um, SL Negri zero four. Um, just on all the on the, all the socials, I think on Instagram, Twitter, and then Facebook, just Sebastian Negri, I think. Uh, Sammy, I am Sam Leaning Ten on all platforms. I'm Mark Moss, nineteen ninety six. Uh, cheers, guys, for watching. <laughs>